When we first spoke with all of our stakeholders, our students, our teachers, our parents, our community members, we asked them if we're successful as a school from pre-K three through fifth grade with our kids, what will they be like as adults? What skills will they have? And all of those different stakeholders came together and they said, well, we really want our kids to be compassionate and have empathy for others. Um, we want our kids to be able to work with someone that doesn't look like them, comes from a different background, but be able to collaborate and learn together across difference. Um, we came up with this list of traits that we wanted our kids to have and we call them our graduate aims. So compassion is one of them, constant learning um, is another, creativity and creative problem solving, um, critical thinking skills, and then what we call um, cross-cultural community building. Um, and those are all um, qualities that we would like to build in our kids as they're here in school. As a school leader, I had a lot that I wanted to focus on for PD with the teachers. But what we started with, because we considered it to be so fundamental and so important, was socio-emotional learning. Um, and we had an approach to discipline and behavior called conscious discipline that we rolled out from that first year. Um, the idea behind this was that before we could get to critical thinking skills and higher level math, if we didn't have a place where kids feel safe and loved and welcomed and nurtured, none of the other more nuanced things that we could possibly try to do would be successful. So everything we do in the beginning of the day, from 8.25 when they come in for breakfast until 9.30 when they finish morning meeting, is aiming very intentionally to bring kids, if they've come in their survival or emotional state, into their executive functioning state. It's those little, little moments at breakfast when I'm connecting with them in the morning that build that deep relationship. You do better with people that you like, but there's a deep connection there and like eating with them in the morning helps to bond that because the day is so jam-packed with instruction, but we're very intentional at Van Ness about making sure that the relationship is paramount. Compassionate. So what friend, uh, name a specific friend that you're thinking of that's very compassionate in here. Alex. Can you tell me one thing that she's done to demonstrate compassion? <coughs> Every time people cry, she says, are you okay? She checks in with friends. She's very supportive. Let's send some love to you. I've seen the kids being able to manage their emotions but also help their um, friends with problem solving skills um, throughout the day. We have a safe place in both classrooms and if we're upset or anything, we just go there and we have breathing exercises and things to calm our bodies down and make us feel relaxed. Earlier somebody was feeling upset in our classroom but she went to the safe place and calmed her body down and there's a star helper who helps the person in the safe place calm their bodies down. When you have high expectations for kids and when you believe that they can own their emotions, they can regulate their emotions, and you just facilitate that and not trying to be in control, and you give them the tools to be successful, not just in a moment, but throughout their day, throughout their time, this is gonna help, this is gonna follow them throughout their life. They are kind to one another, they are empathetic to one another, they check in with one another, they support one another. And it just melts your heart like to see this is like the groundwork to making them to be compassionate human beings, compassionate citizens, not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom. Our big bet, or the assumption that we're making with all that is if we do all these things, we're more likely to get kids who are in an executive 
functioning state, self-regulated, ready to learn.